And so I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The Lord be with you. And with us. And let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O mighty Lord and everlasting God, Vouchsafe, we beseech thee, to direct, sanctify, govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all godliness, be ready, we beseech thee, to hear the devout prayers of thy church, and grant that those things which we ask faithfully, we may obtain effectually, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. lesson is written in the 45th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and ungird the loins of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name, I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I gird you, though you do not know me, that men may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading responsibly those portions of Psalm 96 as printed in the bulletin. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and great is to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yet if the world is established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the woods sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the letter of Philippians, beginning at the 17th verse. Brethren, join in imitating me, and mark those who so live as you have an example in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you, even with tears, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory and their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. St. Matthew, starting in chapter 22 and verse 15. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they set out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teach us the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said to them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar. <coughs> then he said to them, Render, therefore, unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Join with me now as we remember and affirm out loud what we believe as Christians as contained in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was 
made man, and then was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Today we have a uh, special uh, variation to our normal liturgy in Mass. I've asked, uh, I've asked someone to come forward and to share with us uh, a prayer. Jack? And be sure you uh, include your full name and rank, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, folks. Morning. Morning. Most of you always see me in church, but many of you don't know anything about me or who I am or what it's all about. My name is Jack Poirier. I live in Albany, New Hampshire, just down the road a few miles. Uh, I'm a retired police sergeant from Ipswich, Massachusetts. I was a certified firearms instructor. I was a patrol supervisor. I uh, ran the uh, Marine Division, and I was also emergency manager director for my town. I'm a retired Master Sergeant with the U.S. Air Force Security Police. I spent 20 years over a 30-year period. It took a long time, and it was challenging on many occasions. You would know that. And uh, so here I am. And uh, I was going to wear my Air Force uniform, but it's just amazing how much it shrinks over a period of time. <laughs> so I got my VFW uniform, so just bear with me, okay? Having said that, okay, let's get into the prayers. O Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray thee, thine almighty arm to strengthen and protect all those who serve in the armed forces of our country and those who go to sea. Preserve them from the dangers and the violence of those who wish to do us harm, that they may be a safeguard unto the United States of America. In time of war, by their strength and in their time of peace, keep them safe from all evil and do them with courage and loyalty and grant that in all things they may serve without reproach that the inhabitants of our land may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, our heavenly Father, in those hands of the living and the dead, we give thee thanks for all those thy servants who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant to them thy mercy and the light of thy presence, that the good work which thou hast begun in them may be perfected through Jesus Christ, Thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a, a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from the violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogancy, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashions into the united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds of tongues, tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that though obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth in time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust and need to fail all which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 One other quick thing. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was with the Air Force Security Police. During that war, the Air Force lost 111 security policemen. We were the Air Force's infantry. Many, it's, it's insignificant to the 58,000 names on a wall in Washington, D.C., but I just want to say it's very significant to the families who lost those individual troops. I uh, have lost a few of my friends uh, in battle, and I just uh, want to say that uh, God
God bless all you guys, especially uh, our veterans, but most of all their families for the sacrifices that they've done in all our services. Thank you very much. Well done, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Guys, it's real out there. We are in a war, and it is really real if you're in Israel or Gaza, if you're in the middle of the Ukraine world. And I don't think most of us have any idea what that costs or what that payment is required to prevent tyranny and injustice at a global scale. But Americans have been paying the price for hundreds of years and so have many others. And it is men and women who lay their lives down for the sake of others that hold the line. Whether it's the police, the fire, the first responders, I never want us as a parish to forget that. And we have a chance today to remember that as a veterans holiday. And so this flag over this, this table is representative that we pause as we approach the, the rail later for the Eucharist, that this is a noble history we share. It is noble, not something to be ashamed of, not something to be afraid of, that those who built this country with their blood should be honored and revered. And so as a church, as a ministry, I want to make sure very publicly clear about that. Also, there are candles over here that as you're, after you've received your Eucharist host, if you want, you can light one of those candles as you go by in memory of a veteran or someone in your family. And that is a, a Roman Catholic, Anglican Catholic tradition that goes back a thousand years plus. So I want you to know it is encouraged here this morning. So, now to the pastor part. I looked at the passages that we had, and the epistle was the one that got my attention. The epistle was read out of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians is a, is, a, is a letter that was written by Paul to some churches. This would have been around 60 AD, give or take. But essentially, this is part of his work, right? He planted churches throughout the the Middle East, and then he sort of encouraged them to grow, like he talked to them. And if he couldn't visit them in person, he would write a letter, a scroll, they would send it to that area, and then those people would read it. So like the deacons or the elders of the church would read the scroll to the people saying, Paul's written. And so if you can imagine the deacon standing up and saying, okay, we got a new letter from Paul. And, and then you would read this. Paul's writing in Philippians chapter 3, not that I have already obtained or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And all of us who are mature should have this attitude. Interesting, right? So he's, so you just imagine I read that to you. Paul is exhorting, encouraging, challenging the church. And then he goes on to say, only let us stay true to what we've already obtained. Brothers and sisters, together follow my example and observe those who live by the pattern we gave you. Then he says there are those who aren't living according to that pattern, whose God is their belly, whose end is destruction, right? He's saying that they've exchanged a Christian or a heavenly view for a worldly appetite. He says, they focus their mind on earthly and temporal things, but we are different because our citizenship or commonwealth is in heaven. And from there we eagerly await. What are we awaiting? The coming of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I, I couldn't help but read this and it's like, I never served in the military, but I was in ROTC, which is sort of like camp, like it's not real. But uh, I, did, I did get around enough military activity and enough training to know that when they gave you a mission, it was, it was serious. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, casual. 
you were to prepare as if your life depended on it, and indeed it did. And so I feel like Paul is sort of writing to the church of Philippi and saying, guys, uh, we have a mission. And the mission is to become like Christ. Like, that's what's been entrusted to us, is this upward call, this heavenly vision for us to progress until we literally become like Christ. And so he says, because that's the mission, then I have to sort of funnel everything in my life down to what is most essential to my mission. That's the priority. All the other things in my life are secondary to this. And so as Paul is writing this, he's saying to the church, you need to adopt the same posture that I'm adopting. If you're going to be about this Christ stuff, if you're going to follow Jesus, then that becomes the mission, and then you will order your life to fit the requirements of preparing for that mission. Indeed, I would say that that is exactly the case if you were in one of the armed services today. If you were given a mission, you would be training physically, preparing yourself for the rigors of that particular physical mission. You'd be studying intelligence, background, histories, demographics, geography, and weather. You would know where you were going. You would know everything about what you were going to do. You would not dare go on a mission without fully preparing your mind for what was ahead, correct? And then you would also be very careful on your mission training to not think back in the present to the past. So if you're in the middle of a mission, you don't want to think about the gun that jammed three weeks ago, right? You, you, you've got to be present. You can't be looking over your shoulder out of fear or doubt. You have to be completely full on your toes, right? You're going into this with confidence and conviction. You're not holding back. You're not, you're not shying away from this. And so Paul describes all the stuff I just said to you in this passage in the way that he uses the Greek language. And so I love the fact that we can have a <laughs> veteran Sunday that fits with the reading from the epistle. Now, since that epistle was picked by church fathers in the 1500s, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> so I trust that the Holy Spirit's at work here in that little coincidence, right? But I do like the fact that this is sort of a serious focus, a, a very serious couple of things that Paul's teaching us about what it means to be on mission for the kingdom of God. Now, I'm making an assumption here. <laughs> I don't want to make too many assumptions because you know what that does. <laughs> you got that, Jack. That's good. <laughs> Those who have determined to follow Christ are Christians. They have, they have assumed the name of Christ. And so it is to Christians that Paul's writing. If you're on the sidelines sort of watching, like, I'm not sure about this Christian stuff. That's great. Like, I'm thrilled that you're here. But it's not going to make as much sense. And using the military analogy, it's like, you know, I'm thinking about enlisting. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not sure yet. Um, once you enlist, you're in a different headset. You, know, you are completely committed to a process that you're going to go into. And that's very much what it is in the Christian faith. So I want to make sure that I don't assume that everyone here's headspace is the same. Because some of you may be on the sideline watching, wondering, thinking, considering. That's awesome. Great. No problem. Some of you may have said, oh, this is so old. I did this 30 years ago. 40 years ago. 50 years ago. Well, guess what? It's still real today. Right? It's still the mission today. Paul, I would say, could have, if anyone, Paul could have said, guys, <laughs> just read my memoirs. I figured it out. You can figure it out. You know, like he could have sort of coasted a little here at the end of his life, but he didn't. And you can tell by the way he's writing, he's just like a sprinter coming out of the blocks. Like he's leaning into this. Leaning. Like all his force into this. Because of his conviction, right? Because he knew stuff. He experienced things about God that radically altered him. And so I took from this three things from my life. 
Remember, these sermons are for Brad. I just share them with you, right? So people don't get mad. Like afterwards, people are like, did you, were you talking? No, I was not talking to you. I was talking to me, all right? So if you're offended, I apologize. I'm offended too because it, meant it offended me. Um, this stuff's hard to swallow. The Bible describes the Word of God as living, like alive, and it has the ability to pierce us. It pierces our spirit and our soul. So sometimes you'll read something in the Bible or you'll hear it read or you'll hear an idea that comes from Scripture and you're like, oh, oh, man, I'm guilty of that. Oops, that hurt. And that's okay. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So I want to think about these three things that pierced me. All right? These are the three ouches I got from this passage out of Philippians chapter 3. Number one, don't look behind. How many people here have been tempted to <sighs> sit in pity because of what's happened to you in the past? Me. Anybody else do that? Ah, oh, good. Yeah, anybody else? Come on! Would you be <laughs> How many of you are tempted to sit in pity because of things that have happened to you in the past. Not yes, you are. <laughs> Welcome to the human race. We do this, right? Like we, gosh, you have a rough couple of weeks and stuff goes wrong in your house or your job or in your relationship with your parents or your or your spouse or your kids. Or your, like You're like, oh, this is just like that time. I remember Thanksgiving 2017. She just would not let it go, right? That kind of stuff. <laughs> that's what? That's Oh, that's looking back there. That's looking at the past. Or, or, let's get more serious. I shouldn't have looked at that. That wasn't a good thing for me to look at. But I, I can't help myself. I look at this stuff. I remember I've been doing this for years, and so I can't stop myself from looking at this stuff. So maybe there's no hope for me. I'm just stuck in the past. I cannot move forward. Well, that's more real, isn't it? Painful stuff. Well, these are the kinds of things that the Christian faith actually not only can help with, but release you from. Break the hold of it over you. And so Paul is describing to us that if you want to become like Christ, you won't be able to live in your past. You will not be able to keep going back to those past things. You're going to have to leave them behind, and you have to go forward. Now, to go forward with stuff in your past that's unresolved takes what? Faith. Because we would like all those loose ends cut. We'd like everything tied up. We'd like to be over that sin. We'd like to just not have to struggle with sin anymore. We'd like to be able to get along with our in-laws at Thanksgiving. We'd like everything to just be peachy king. But if you're waiting for that to happen, guess what? You're paralyzed. You're stuck. You, you are not moving forward. You, at best, are treading water, right? And so... Paul's saying, look, guys, I need, you to, I need you to keep moving forward here. We're on mission. Yeah, we took a hit back there, but we're not going to stop. We're going to keep moving forward. That's the first idea here that Paul's describing. The second one is reaching forward is an effort. I, I ran track for like four or five years when I was in school. And, and I was the quarter mile guy. And so we never used the blocks but we were always the guys who ran right after the 200 guys, and they used blocks. Now, blocks are these chucky things you put on the ground, and you put your feet up against them, and then you can push off against something so that when the gun fires, you get that extra step. Sprinter's blocks is what they're called. This is the image in Greek. Paul's saying, I want you to press forward. He literally uses those words. So he's not just saying that you move forward, that you look forward, that you're looking into the future. But he's saying, I want you to press forward. I want you to leave where you're at. The, the idea for me spiritually is do not 
be content with where you are. That is deadly to the mission. And I work with priests, and I'm the youngest in the diocese. And most of these guys are content. They're content. They've got their MDiv. They've got their parish. They've been in service to God. They've got a decent 401k. Everybody sort of likes them. And they're completely not like Paul. They're not leaning forward. And I've run into people who go to church their whole lives, who know the pew, and they know all the liturgy, and they can read everything along. They know every word. But in their spiritual life, they are flat. They're just not taking any effort at all to read scripture, to spend time in prayer with God. It is just status quo. That's not what's going to do it. <laughs> you're, you're not going to spiritually grow and mature and become like Christ if you're content with where you are. And Paul's really clear about it. And the way he describes it, he uses these physical terms, like leaning forward. Like, so you're putting your weight up on your toes. And let me tell you something. If you put your weight up on your toes, you better take a step. Like, you're going to fall on your nose if you don't. Like, you're committing yourself to forward movement, right, when you put your weight on your toes. I am. So I'm, I'm reading this, I'm pondering this, and I'm like, Lord, there's probably some space in my life right now where I'm just content. Oh, yeah. It's football season. That means during football season, I don't typically read as much because I'm busy watching football. And Saturdays and Sundays get chewed up because I, I got to watch football, right? Right? So there's this sort of contentment, like, well, I'll get back to that book I was reading. Or I'll get back to that study the bishop asked me to do. Or I'll get back to that person who asked a question about, no, oh, man, I got, uh, I just told you, this stuff's hard. It's, I need to, I can't be content. None of us can be content. We cannot afford that. And if we were out on mission in the war right now, we would not be content. You're not going to leave your gun behind. You are not going to leave it unclean, and you are not going to leave anything that's essential to your kid to someone else to take care of. Third thing, last one, focus your mind. Now, I'm taking these quotes directly from Paul's reading in Philippians 3. I like this. Who focuses, this is Paul, who focuses their mind on earthly and temporal things, but we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. We are different. Focusing your mind. So, to recap, don't look behind, press forward, focus your mind. Those three things are what it requires to be on mission. Focusing your mind, I believe, at least the emphasis I got from my life, which I'm going to now share with you, what are we ingesting? What are we chewing on? What podcasts are you listening to? What news cycles are you obsessed with? What books have gotten your attention? What TV shows, what movies have got you? What's, what stories are really captivating your imagination? Focusing the mind on something other than earthly things appears to be an essential to stay on mission. I know for myself, that I love a good mystery book. I'm a seven-year member of Audible. I listen to a mystery book at least twice a, a month, right? Daniel De Silva, Patterson, any of these like top writers, I love their mystery books. I love them, they're fantastic. And I can get so consumed in them and so wrapped up in them that it crowds out other stuff in my life. And so, when I take a moment to push back, it's not that that's evil. It's just, it's not, it's not on mission for me. And so there's a balance, right? There's a healthy balance here. And so for me, sometimes I'll go to the next book and the next book and the next book because 
there's 27 books in the series, right? Like, and, you, and each book leaves you on a hanger, and you want to know what happened to the character. And then next thing you know, you're like three weeks into a binge, right? I believe that's important to the Christian that we learn to maintain some, some boundaries and healthy balance in our life. I, I can do the same thing with Fox News or CNN. I, I can do the same thing with podcasts about Christian theology, right? And, and what that does is nothing bad. It's just that it crowds out the time I have to be quiet. It's God. Focus my thoughts on him. One of the things that saved me is the cold, clear nights in New Hampshire. I will put on my down vest and I will go out on the back porch by myself after everybody's asleep. And I'll have a talk with God in the silence. I'm back on mission. That's right. And it's amazing. The moment I get still, you guys come into my mind. I can see stuff. I need to pray for them right now. I need to follow up with this person. There's something something on them. Oh, I wonder if that person, it's amazing. It's like I can hear again. I can see again. I'm, I'm aware again of stuff beyond just my own crisis, you know? Because life throws stuff at you all the time, right? Like, you're, you're like, man, my kids are going crazy, and your kids are going crazy, and I got problems with this. And my, that, that's the white noise. What I'm talking about is a... mission. What am I on mission for? I'm not looking behind. I'm looking forward. I'm not content. I've got my way up on my toes. And I'm going to focus my mind on the heavenly things. These are three biblical strategies that God gives us. I don't think you ever outgrow this. You know, I, don't, I think in 20 years if I'm still here by God's grace, I'll say the same thing I just said. Like, we don't ever outgrow this. This is the Christian life. And you're on mission. So I hope you'll lay up again. You'll re-sign your commissions, right? <laughs> Father, help us as a parish. Uh, it's hard. The world is just overwhelming at times. Help us to be faithful to the mission that you put us on. And Lord, help us, help us to be honest with ourselves. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, by thy holy apostle, has taught us to make prayer and supplication to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, to live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And Father, we remember Nancy, who's fighting breast cancer. For a child named Parker, who's very ill with cancer. For Pauline, who's experiencing memory loss and fighting Parkinson's. We pray for Caleb, a prodigal, who's fighting addiction. We pray for Carol, who son-in-law was found dead. We pray for Jessa, who lost her twin hoping for another baby. I pray for prodigals in general, those that have wandered from the faith, who've lost their hope, who've lost their center. I pray that you'll bring them back by the grace of God. I pray for Philip and Sarah Tarantino, cancer of the lung and the prostate. I pray for them as they endure illness and surgery. I think of Greg and Carol, prayers for continued guidance and strength to take care. And I think of our dear sister, Linda Monroe, who has got severe pain in her feet. But Father, we do not forget the family of Mary Thomas, who celebrated her life there, here today and yesterday. Or she'll be buried in a few hours. So I pray for Peter and for his three daughters and the many grandchildren, that you will comfort them and and this afternoon, as they have final closure, it's hard, it's deep grief that only you can heal. So I'm asking you to do that. And so we bless your holy name for all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Now you who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commands of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. And take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by the thought, word, and deed in the sight of thy majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misgivings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, 
the burden of death is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the news of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, it's worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, here also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Now remember that big word, propitiation, means to absorb or soak up the wrath of God. It's to take all of the frustration and the anger and all of the wrath for our sin. Jesus took it on the cross. He took it for us. So when we say that big word, there's no word in the English language still that can absorb all that meaning. And so we stick with this 600 year old word. Propitiation. It's a beautiful word. So, the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. And let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with the angels, the archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty that these, thy holy gifts, which we now offer to thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion, precious death, his mighty resurrection, glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless, sanctify with thy word, and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully, to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to thee humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sin to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with thy spirit. And we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so we eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and we drink his blood, and our sinful body is made of his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and meet in us. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy of thou shalt come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. He's great. 
And let us pray. Mighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech you, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us walking. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Now glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Almighty. O Lord, the only God, our Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, let that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. If you would please stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.